We've got another Nickel Hunt and Album Fill episode. This is episode 49, and we have box 79 and box 79. And there's a reason why I have them labeled both 79. Hey everyone, it's Rob Finds Treasure and welcome back to my channel. Now I wanna kick off this video first by explaining why I have both boxes labeled box number 79. Back on episode 46, we picked up a couple of nickel boxes and one of the nickel boxes that we counted as a two box hunt only had about half a box that we could hunt because the other half was uncirculated nickel rolls. Well, I picked up both these boxes and one of the boxes again is a half a box, about 22 or 23 rolls. And there may be some circulated nickels in some of these newer rolls like we saw in the other one. But at the end of the day, now that I've had a second box that doesn't have a complete circulated nickel roll box, I'm gonna count this one as half a box. And since we counted the other one as a full box, the two halves make one. So this is just gonna be an extra box. We're gonna go through it first, and then we'll go on to box 79. That's how I'm gonna do it. That's the way to be fair to the album series because I keep counting these boxes as full boxes and we're not getting a full box hunt. So this will be a non-counted box to make up for the other half box we found. And this will be a full box hunt because it is, as I inspected, a full box to hunt. Now that I covered what we're doing and why we're doing it, I want to remind everyone that if you haven't watched the first 48 episodes in this Nickel Hunt and Album Fill series, I always have that playlist link down below and pinned up here so you can check it out before you see the progress made on the album. Now for those of you already caught up, you know there's no reason to even open the book. We definitely need only one nickel, which is the 50D key date nickel, only two and a half million minted roughly, and it's going to be a tough find. We're hoping to find it sometime soon, or at least by box 100. That means we have about 21, 22 boxes to go, including this series, to find it. That's the mission. That being said, we are always looking for some upgrades, especially in the war nickel years and in the 30s and 40s and a few of the 50s, which have been hard to come by for upgrades because the album's in such great shape. Now, many of you already know I use my nickel coin hunt mats while I'm doing my searches to sort my finds, check for varieties, and things of that nature. If you'd like to get one of these mats, I always have the nickel mats as well as all of the other mats I offer on my website, which is listed down below, as well as pinned up here for your convenience. No sense sitting here chit-chatting any longer. We're gonna get right to the bad box or the half box. And what I'm gonna do is crack open all of the uncirculated rolls first, see if we have any finds in those, and then I'll bring you back in right before we start the circulator rolls. And hopefully we've got some finds in there. I'll see you if and when we have a first find in the box that doesn't count. Well, we're on roll number 21, and the vast majority is all uncirculated nickels. There were a couple of different dates in here. Not many, pretty negligible as far as the amount. But I bring in because within this roll, and there are a couple of circulated nickels in it, we do have a 1941 Philadelphia. So we do have a first find in the uncirculated rolls, although like I said, it's been negligible. And with only 22 or 23, even if I had a total of one full roll of miscellaneous stuff in here, it would still not only be half a box. All right, let's get back to the hunt, see if there's anything else in these last few uncirculated rolls. So we finished the uncirculated rolls and I wasn't quite sure about this final roll because one of the enders looked brand new and the other end I couldn't tell based on the color, but I popped it open and it looks like now we're going to start getting into the circulated nickels. I just wanted to bring in for that. I'll check that roll and we'll start giving you regular updates if I find anything from this point on. Roll number 32, we have another find and it's another 1941 Jefferson nickel also from Philadelphia. And I will point out that in these quote unquote circulated rolls, there are quite a few new nickels as well as expected. Let's get back to the hunt. Well, I'm pretty excited because we're on roll 50. And one of the things I always look for when I have a lot of uncirculated nickels or uncirculated rolls is a blank planchet. And take a look at this in roll 50. We are going to have a blank planchet. 
We are going to have a blank planchet, and I don't know if that's a 2021 blank planchet. It looks pretty scratched up. I've uh, inspected it. That's not scratched away as if somebody was trying to hide the design or anything. That is legitimately a blank planchet, and man, it looks heavily circulated, so... Either way, I haven't found one of these in a long time, and I have looked at it, guys. That has got to be a blank planchet. I don't see any design elements whatsoever. It looks legit to me. And we've got a nickel blank planchet in the box, which now makes me think I should check my other two nickel boxes of uncirculated ones, see if we have any more blank planchets, because sometimes when there's one, there's a couple. I have found, I think, six or seven blank nickel planchets in my time, and most of those were found, I believe, in 2018. But either way, I'll take it. That's a nice find and uh, can't get mad at that at all. Let's finish the hunt and I'll bring you a wrap up. So we finished that first nickel box and there was a ton of uncirculated nickels, even in the circulated nickel rolls. We had 241s to start off the hunt and we actually found a pretty nice 1956 Denver. It looks like it might've been in an album, but no full steps. And, you know, the luster is kind of worn away due to it being in an album. The find of that first box is going to be this blank planchet. And looking at it, I don't see a raised rim. Now, for those wondering, a blank planchet has a couple of different processes it goes through. A blank disc is basically a punch out from a strip that they use to mint the coins. After they have punched it from the strip of metal, then it's first put into a milling process which upsets the rim and puts a raised rim on it after that it's punched by the dies and it becomes a coin typically if there's no raised rim then that hasn't gone through the first milling process yet and it has a little more value now obviously this one's pretty scratched up but either way i don't see a raised rim on it a raised rim is what you see on the outside see how the rim has a defined raised rim element this one doesn't have it so I'm thinking it's not from where, I'm thinking it just hasn't been through the first milling process. Now in your red books on page 433 and pages 434 and 435, they give some information about blank planchets and other misstrikes and errors, but they also give a little price guide in here. And if you go here, blank planchet, no raised rim, and we go down to Jefferson nickel, the value is about 12 bucks. Now, if it had a raised rim or, or an upset rim, then it would be a little bit less valuable at 10 bucks. $12 nickel find, I will take that. Pretty gosh darn cool. And it's been over three years since I have found one and that makes me happy. We'll add that up there. We'll put the discards into the box and now we'll begin box 79 of Full Box to Hunt. Roll number four of box 79 and we do have a 40s Jefferson nickel. It is a 1947. Denver. I figured I'll make mention of it. I did weigh the blank planchet just to confirm the weight and it is just about at five grams, which is mint specifications. So definitely not an altered coin. Had they shaved away all the design to make it look like a blank, it wouldn't weigh five grams. Now let's get back to the hunt. Roll number nine, another 40s find, a 1948 Philadelphia. Roll number 10, a little bit of everything. We've got a proof nickel. This one's gonna be a 2007 S proof. We'll take that all day. Same roll and by the appearance, man, that is a beautiful 1959 Denver. No full steps, but I don't normally show the 50s fines, but when they look that nice, we've gotta show it. Roll number 13, we've got a very slick 1948 Denver. Just grabbed roll 15 out of the box and flipped it and we have a Canadian Ender. I'm not gonna show it out of the roll, but if we have another find in that roll, I'll bring it back. Roll number 32 and we have another 40s Jefferson Nickel. This is a 1946 Philadelphia. We'll just check that R really quick. And that R does have the notch in it that would be consistent. Well, it's a little bit lower than would be consistent with the Henning nickel. And I don't see any die scratches. 
or any raised elements in the N. And let me just weigh this up. Henny nickel should weigh 5.4 grams. It's not a fail safe way because some of them, they believe they got good planchets and see that's five grams on the nose pretty much. So that's an authentic planchet. But Henning did get authentic planchets from the same mint they minted nickels from. But let me do a little research. I'm almost certain that that damage on that R is not in the exact spot where the Henning nickels notch would be. Although it's a little convincing. Could just be damage. Let me bring up some images and bring you back in. All right, I've talked about the Henning nickels before, and it's pretty basic. A guy named Francis Leroy Henning minted some counterfeit nickels from 39, 44, 46, 47, and 53. They're all Philadelphia. The 44 war nickel is easy to spot because it doesn't have the P above it, and there's a die crack and that notch. And you can see how pronounced that notch is and how high up it is on the R. Now, they should weigh about 5.3 to 5.4 grams, even circulated. But mine always five grams on the nose, and some of them don't even have the notch. But my notch doesn't look like the notch that you see in the images uh, on the screen. Either way, I'm going to hold on to it. I don't think that it's going to be a Henning nickel, but definitely an interesting notch on it for sure, and a notch on the year that the fake nickels were produced. I don't see anything else that tells me it's a Henning nickel. Had it weighed 5.3 or 5.4 grams, we would have been sold on it. But man, that one gave me a little bit of excitement. Either way, like I said, it's kind of a miscellaneous find. I'm going to hold on to it in case I do some research down the road and find out that it is. But at 5 grams, the notch is in the wrong spot. There's no die crack. There's no braised elements in unum. And there's no porous finish to the obverse. I'm thinking this is a good nickel. We'll hold on to it though. Now let's get back to the hunt. Nearing the end of the box, roll number 49 is gonna produce us a 1941 San Francisco. Well, unfortunately that's gonna conclude box 79 of the hunt. The one box that we did hunt in its entirety, of course. And uh, it was pretty light on the fines. Overall, we had eight in the 50s, seven in the 40s, we did get an 09D. We got that one Canadian from 1989. We also got that odd, almost a Henning nickel. Not quite sure, but I don't think it is. We got a 2007 S proof, and the find of the hunt really is going to be the blank planchet. Was not expecting that, although in uncirculated boxes, you never know if you're going to find one. We know we didn't find that elusive 50D yet again. And other than the nice 59, the decent 56, I don't think we're going to have any upgrades or any additions, of course, but let me go ahead and just check with the album and bring you back. After reviewing the album with today's finds, we did have one upgrade. That 59D is a stunner, so we put it in there. The one I had in there was actually pretty nice as well, but less luster, so we're going to keep the new one in there as an upgrade. I thought about putting the blank planchet in the final spot instead of the proof nickel that we had found from a previous hunt, but when I put it in there, it's too loose. It doesn't stay in there because of the no raised rim. So we're going to leave that proof nickel in there for now. At the end of the day, 79 boxes down, one more upgrade, but nothing significant for the album. Obviously, the hunt for the 50D continues. Hopefully, despite not adding really anything to the album, you guys found this video fun. We did have some good finds. If you did, I'd appreciate the thumbs up. And as always, everyone... Happy hunting, and thanks for watching.